Bardic Radio presents Pacific Obsession Adapted from a message by Humberto de Campos through Chico Xavier from the book Letters and Chronicles, Chapter 8 When I met my friend Custodio Saquarema in the spiritual realm, we had an emotional outpouring natural of long-separated companions. The conversation gravitated toward comments on our new situation. I knew that Custodio belonged to a spiritist family, and certainly in this condition, he would have taken as much advantage as possible from the existence of which he left. With this in mind, I ventured a question, hoping to find him in excellent standing for entering the higher spheres. Sakurema, however, smiled vaguely and reported with the sharp self-criticism that I recognized in him. Well, my dear, you cannot evaluate what a disguised obsession is without any external signs. I came back from Earth on the mode of, you won it, but you can't keep it. I gathered much consideration and a lot of money, but I returned much poorer than when I reincarnated. You know that I was reborn in a spiritist home. But as is the case with most reincarnated individuals, I had some partners in past addictions and irresponsibilities attached to my mental field. Since they were discarnated, they used me to feel the terrestrial sensations, as if I were a cow, to which they were being fed as a small family. Believe me, I reincarnated with an excellent program to progress toward the light. But my vampirizers were cunning and intelligent. They acted very subtly without my perception of their influence. And do you know how? By means of simple inner suggestion. As a young adult, my friendly spirit instructors encouraged me through my parents to cultivate the kingdom of the spirit, referring to study, selflessness, and inner improvement. But inside of me, the voices of my discarnate companions and addictions emerged from my mind. They gave me the false idea that I was talking to myself, Things of the soul, Sakurama? None of that. It is time to enjoy your youth. Leave philosophy for later. At some point I graduated. The warnings from home grew louder, calling me to duty, while my spirit companions kept mocking me. What? Duty? This is not the right time. How can you build a career and be religious at the same time? Sakurama, come on. Look at everyone else. Don't be crazy. I got married and, soon after, the calls to become more spiritual intensified. But my invisible explorers kept on saying, Don't give in, Sakurema. Focus on your family responsibilities. You have to work, earn a living, get a position, and take care of your wife and children. I got older. My parents passed away. I was a lawyer and a banker and I still listened to the good spirits through dedicated companions who asked me to rise morally by fulfilling my commitments. But in my mind, my obsessors continued relentlessly. Sakurema, come on. How about the social life? You are not prepared to dedicate your life to your faith. Then, my friend, came old age and illness, these two nurses of the soul who live hand in hand on earth. I began to suffer and became disenchanted. In my aging years, there were very few spirit friends inviting me to open my heart to greater spirituality. But at this time, the screams of my vampirizers rose louder, more ironic, breathing sarcasm into me, as if I was ridiculing myself. You, old Sakwarema? What are you going to do with spiritism? It's too late. Profession of faith, messages from another world. What will be said of you, old man? Your best friends will think you went mad, senility. Make no mistake, your own children will ban you, thinking you are mentally ill, unfit to manage your finances. Your time has already passed. My persecutors did not harm my body, nor did they disturb my mind. They only encouraged me to idleness, thus preventing me from renewal. I returned to the spiritual realm like an indebted and empty-handed farmer who returns from a fertile field where he could have accumulated unimaginable treasures. 
I know that you still write for men and women, our brothers and sisters. Tell them about my poor experience. Talk to them about the pacific, dangerous, masked obsession. Tell them something about the value of time, the potential greatness of any given time in the human pilgrimage. I hugged Sakwarema, focusing on the hope of new times, promising to fulfill his request. And here I transcribe his personal teaching, which could be of use to many. Although I am certain that, if I were now reincarnated on Earth and received a similar lesson from someone, perhaps I would be very disinclined to take advantage of it.